You did it, SpongeBob. You built a high-end gaming PC. You can run every game you want, high refresh rates. You're the true member of the PC master race, but you forgot to factor in one thing and one thing only, time, which waits for no man. I think I found a solution, y'all. It's called the Asus ROG Ally. It's supposed to be a handheld gaming PC, which allows you to play the games natively on the actual unit for times when you just, you just can't be next to your baby. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed and see what we're working with. Let's get that open. Okay, we got like a little placard. Immediately I picked this up and my first thought is, this is very light. I expect this to be heavy. This feels about as heavy as the phone I'm using to record this. We have a 65 watt charger with ROG symbols. Okay, so they gave us a little stand in here too. And probably manuals and stuff that no one's ever gonna actually read. Yep, I was right. This on first impression feels really, really nice. Like to the touch. See, you got the ROG logo, little reflective band, heat vents on the back and the top. You got like a button layout with the Xbox buttons. This feels really reminiscent of like a PlayStation controller. This feels good. All right, let's get this booted up, see how it runs. Charger goes up top. Oh, for size comparison, there's a banana. Turns out it fits in the coat pocket just fine. So the camera's not really showing it. The colors of these LEDs are really nice. So it is a Windows computer. Let's get this touch screen. Turns out the power button is also a fingerprint scanner. So you can use this to unlock your device. And as usual, there's some type of updates. This is literally a PC that just happens to play games. It's a gaming PC. Okay, and we're in. Okay, so this button should load up a launcher for the games. All right, so now we're in. So. Since this is like a whole gaming PC, it has access to both your Xbox library, your Steam library. You can download the PlayStation um, remote app. This is literally like an entire computer. So anything it can do on the computer, you should be able to do here. You know, thinking in mind that, yeah, it's a small gaming PC. It's not going to do it to the same level as a bigger computer. But let's see how it's going. So it came with a game preloaded. Smooth move. So much better since the accident. The volume rocker up top. Okay, gotta pick a character. I go slimy toe mouth. Okay, I guess I gotta move boxes. I have no idea what I'm doing. So this screen, like, like I, I'm gonna keep saying this. This screen is really nice. These controls feel nice. Um, we have triggers up the top, bumpers at the top, triggers on the back. This, I don't know. This might be the way to go, man. All right, so there's enough of this. I'm about to get the real library on. We're going to see how this really runs. Okay, now that I've signed to my Steam account, this is uh, this is pretty cool. It's, kind of, it's kind of like loading up a PlayStation, really. Um, So I need to download the game. I'm just going for big. We're going straight for Call of Duty, man. 162 gigs, man. It's going to take up my whole storage. I think this thing came with 512 gigs of storage, but there is a micro SD slot on top, and you can add more to it right here. I'm not going to go into all the features this has. It's a computer. It does a lot. I'm just going to describe my experience. There is something cool I found already. For one, when you download the game, it automatically comes here. So after all my games are downloaded, it should already load it all up once I press that button. You should go to the Windows mode. This thing is basically a mouse. R1 is left click. R2 is right click. All right, y'all. Time for the moment of truth. Call of Duty downloaded. Let's see how it runs. I'm going to match, y'all. The fact I even can play this is crazy. And this little FPS thing, see I'm getting like 53 frames on a handheld running the real Call of Duty game. Oh, so I downloaded an easy game like Half-Life 2, right? What's dope about this is, since it's all Steam, it picked up where I last played on my PC. And this is crazy, like the camera is not doing this justice at all. This looks, this is a really old game. But it looks good for how old it is because it doesn't take much to run it. Ooh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to a later part of the game and then see how well it syncs over to. Oh, my God. Now I'm here. I'm going to click file. I'm going to save the game to a new file. Then I'm going to quit this. Okay, now we're on my main gaming PC. Let's load up Half-Life 2 and let's hope it all sync. Cause if it did, then yeah, this is a game changer. No pun intended. Cool, let's load the most recent save. 
Yeah, that's why I left off on the um on the um handheld. This is perfect. I can step away from my computer and yeah, make some progress, come back and pick it off where I left. But for these little games that you know, I'm just trying to clear out my backlog. This is perfect. And checking the battery, I'm at like 34%. So I've been on this for at least an hour. I guess this would go for at least an hour and a half, maybe two. I usually don't have enough time to really play the game for hours on end. So this is actually uh, this is actually pretty good. And then with a game like South There's Park, it's like, you know, base, what I need a full PC for, for a bigger screen. Matter of fact, while we on that subject, look what I found out. Look at that, y'all. From here to there. That's crazy. So Fortnite, I'm seeing like in performance mode, 720, I'm getting crazy frame rates. But this thing is heating up bad. I'm like at 90 degrees. 1080p seems to play just fine. Okay guys, I think I found a sweet spot. I put it in performance mode, dropped it to low graphics, <laughs> low settings. And yeah, I put a frame cap at 60 frames. And I'm pretty much getting the nonstop 60 frames. Now, when I plug it in, this uh, the system runs at a higher frame rate, but it starts to get really hot. Like it was, it was approaching the full 120, and that's crazy. Yeah, this is this is really playable. Yeah, you could easily take this on the road with you and still catch up. Probably even play with some friends if you put the mic on. All in all, this seems like a pretty dope system, man. The fact that technology came this far is crazy. So like a college student who spends his whole day in the library, this would be a good way to blow off some steam in between study sessions. Maybe someone who travels a lot, get you something to do on a plane. I can really see this being really useful. Even just like a long commute, if you ride the train an hour each way, just to get you something to do. Me personally, as cool as this is, I think I'm gonna take it back just cause I don't have a real use case for it. But the fact that technology has come this far, that I could run native games on here, and this could have just been my gaming solution. That's crazy to me. I'm still gonna stick with my big PC. I noticed that times I'm away from this PC, I just, you know, I won't have time to play the game regardless because I'm busy, but yeah, it, it's crazy that technology has came this far. So yeah, that's pretty much my experience with this. I do like it. I think it's a great device. What do you think? Is this something you could use? Let me know in the comments. And as usual, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.